Hey friends, Michael Brown here. It is January 25th, 2024, for those who will be watching this in the days ahead. Uh, This is a heartfelt announcement with much prayer and agony of heart behind it. It is in light of General Fuller's announcement last night on behalf of IHOP KC that they will simply be proceeding with their current investigation and not bringing in another third party. So uh, since I was with everyone speaking at IHOP KC on November 5th. I have continued to work behind the scenes to keep the promise that I made that I would not let the people there down and the broader body of Christ that I'm committed to and wherever there are victims involved here that I'm committed to. I've done my best behind the scenes to move things forward in a righteous direction. I'll share more on that in a moment. But I I want to dispel a few myths as best as I can because of firsthand interaction with people involved. There are lies and myths circulating regarding people on the advocacy group. I don't know all of them, but there are lies and myths circulating that they had some long-term plan to bring down Mike Bickle or to bring down IHOP KC or that this was some type of coup or some pre-organized attempt to hurt the ministry. That is absolutely false. The people I know on on the AG are people whose hearts are broken. This is their worst nightmare. Many of them, their their whole lives were were shaped pouring into IHOP KC and giving themselves to the prayer movement and loving and honoring Mike Bickle. So when you hear evil reports about them, simply dismiss those. At the same time, you may find this hard to believe But in the endless conversations and interactions I've had with leadership at IHOP KC, every single time, right up to General Fuller yesterday when I spoke with him for the first time, when we spoke for an hour, every single one has told me the same thing. We want the whole truth to come to light no matter how ugly it is. We don't want to cover up anything. And in point of fact, The current investigation that IHOP KC has underway actually is independent. I've seen the paperwork. I've seen the emails. They're not, General Fuller is not even allowed to interact with the attorney doing the investigation right now to find out details that will be released to the public. At the same time, that investigator was not suitable and accepted by the advocacy group representing those coming forth as victims because of which another third party needed to be brought in. Now, please understand this. I made a public commitment, November 5th, that if things did not go in the right direction, I would be the loudest one calling for account. I would be the loudest one calling for things to move forward in a different direction. So I'm I'm seeking to raise my voice as loudly and clearly as possible to say there must be a new direction. Please hear me. I can attest, having spoken to people firsthand, I can attest that mistakes were made on all sides. Honest mistakes in certain cases, people trying to do the right thing and it coming out the wrong way, not malicious mistakes, but I can attest to mistakes being made, mistrust coming in, and the devil got in big time. I can tell you exactly when and where and how, even this very week. I have been on consecutive phone calls with people on both sides, on the IHOP KC leadership side, on the advocacy group leadership side, consecutive phone calls where both are brokenhearted, feeling they were betrayed by the other. Satan got in and separated brothers. This is the work of the devil. And here's the deal. The body of Christ is hurting terribly right now. The name of Jesus is suffering terrible reproach. The Holy Spirit is being mocked. People are losing their faith in Jesus over this. People don't know what's up and what's down, what's right and what's wrong, who can be trusted, what can be trusted, what's real and what's not. This is an international crisis, and no one, no servant of God has the right to their own opinion or own view here. We all, ha- all have to humble ourselves and come together and find a path forward. 
And to the degree that the allegations are true, you're talking about victims with a new open wound and open sore every day, and they want closure, and they want righteousness, and they want ministry, and all of that is getting delayed. The reason I have waited this long to come forward with the announcement that I'm about to bring is because as of yesterday, there was still hope for another path. I, I, I was pleading with brothers on both sides, and they weren't resistant. They were not resistant because they are brothers in the Lord, and we do serve the same God, to come together in the same room and find a path forward. And, and, and there was a path forward that, that was happening. A, a representative for IHOP KC guaranteed me, his word, I guarantee you we'll make this work. That was less than two weeks ago. And, and there was a third party that was found that was mutually acceptable, acceptable to the advocacy group representing the victims. A third party was found. IHOP KC reached out to that third party. They were not able to do it because of, of issues of sickness in the family. So now it was back to the drawing board. And then the devil came in and other things happened. And boom, next thing, explosion and no trust. So as of yesterday, I pleaded with General Fuller, accept whoever the advocacy group is putting forward. General Fuller felt we have an independent investigation going forward. We are not trying to cover anything up. We will go with that. That's where things stand right now. I want to say again, I believe with all my heart that the advocacy group has been trying to do the right thing on behalf of those who have come forward as victims. I truly believe that. And I truly believe that General Fuller wants all the truth to come to light. But we have reached an impasse. There is no way forward now. This is an international issue for the body of Christ. So I will be reaching out to senior respected leaders in the days ahead. I will ask them, people who do not have a dog in the fight, I will ask them to come together and reach out to the advocacy group and to find a third party that is acceptable to the advocacy group representing those who have come forward as victims. I will ask them to then take things from here on behalf of the hurting body of Christ internationally. Mike has been an international leader. This is an international ministry. There are no autonomous churches and individuals. We are all part of the body of Christ. In our charismatic circles, we don't have a denominational structure and courts of appeal and those kinds of things. This is what we must do. 1 Corinthians 6, Paul rebukes the believers there. Can't you work things out in your own midst? So this is now what we must do. IHOPKC will publish their report. That will be public. We will ask for this panel of leaders to come together to oversee that the investigation takes place in a way that is acceptable to those in the advocacy group representing those who have come forward as victims and everyone involved will do their best to make sure it is righteous and fair to all involved. If Mike is guilty of the charges, then it's up to that leadership group to call him to repentance and to bear fruits of repentance and to have personal restoration, not to leadership, but personal restoration in his own life where he's been falsely charged Then he needs to be cleared on those things. And those who have been victims need not just to have a day in court, but to have closure and receive the ministry that they need. So I'm asking for leaders in the body of Christ to come together as one for the hurting bride, to put aside our agendas. The quicker I can get out of the way, I'm very happy to do it and ask others to lead the way in this. Please pray with me for a righteous outcome. I believe this is a path forward. I've been in interaction with other senior leaders and they've been feeling we need to go in this direction for some time now. We gave it every last shot to work it out internally as the brothers involved have felt to go in a different direction. We must now go in this direction for the honor of the name of Jesus and for the sake of a hurting bride. I want to say this last thing. Many of you, like me, have shed a lot of tears over this. Out, out of my perspective, has just been out of pain for the body of Christ and seeing all this division and seeing so much woundedness. 
Others, it's been much more personal and individual, and you've shed tears over that because of your years of investment or direct situations that involved you. I can only say that our pain and our tears reflect only the tiniest bit, the heart of God for his flock, for his sheep. He's very jealous for them right now, and he's jealous for the reputation of the name of his son. Let's work together to bring some redemption out of this. Let this be a time when the refiner's fire comes and does a house cleaning for all of us. Lord, start the work in me, in each of us. Let the refiner's fire come and let us move forward with greater purity and greater honor in the days ahead. And even if a movement that was one becomes many movements, let the movement of prayer continue. Just a few months ago, this prayer movement out of Kansas City rallied more people together to pray for Israel than, in my knowledge, in history that more people rallied to pray for Israel, and now Israel is in the battle of its life, and the whole region is in turmoil and pain. The prayers, the worship, let them continue, and make a personal determination. What Satan and circumstances mean for evil, turn it around as something that will be for good, for greater good, for your own growth, for your own determination that Jesus will be exalted in your life, in your body, in your heart, in your mind. May healing come, may righteousness come, may Jesus be exalted.